Hey, come on, let's go. We have fires waiting. Those cattle must be to start on time. What's going on? It's not Saturday. What do you wash your feet for? It ain't my idea. Mr. Hoss sprained ankle. Oh, yeah? How'd you do that? He slipped on pencil. On what? Pencil. I stepped on that and it rolled under my foot. <laughs> Uh, don't worry about it. It's only writer's cramp. Yeah, I'm going to that dang meeting. No meeting. You keep foot in hot water. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with it. This, this dang pop jockey just wants to play doctor. Nothing wrong. It's ah! Ow! You keep foot in hot water. Bandage, plenty rest, pretty quick, ankle, all right. It is a little swollen, eh? Go, you go to meeting. Okay. You stay here, keep foot in hot water. Take care of yourself. I'll tell all the guys in town about your hard life. Yeah, give them my regard. Tell me, they good. Sir, wait. Come die the time. Sick of something. Hotel scene if he could rescue any strays and got trapped himself. Three fires in two months. Too many to be accidental. I agree with you, Mr. Tucker. There's a barn burner loose, all right. I know the signs. When I was sheriff of Van Buren County, I caught three of them. I heard about that wall. It's better than our law officers can do. Um, any word on Sandy? No, not yet. Doc said he'd come over as soon as he could. What about Mrs. Lund? Oh, she turned up all right. Angry, but safe. Three fires in two months. Somebody's setting them. Mr. Tucker, as dry as this town is, any chimney spark could start a fire, and you know that. A hundred thousand dollars worth of damage, and you're talking about chimney sparks? Well, it's a fact, isn't it? No, it isn't. Sheriff! I was poking around near where the fire started. Found this. Coal oil. I knew it. It was arson. There's more bad news. I met the doc on the way over here. Sandy Anderson's dead. Oh. Now it's arson and murder. Well, Sheriff? I'll investigate. Investigate? We want this man caught, tried, and jailed. Every woman in town is scared to death. My wife's afraid to go to bed. Fear the house will burn. Three fires, no arrests. Maybe you'd better step down and let a man who can handle the job take over. Mr. Wallace, right. 
Another fire in Virginia City. We'll get ourselves a new sheriff and a new deputy. Excuse me. It wasn't your fault. You don't know what it's like being responsible for a man's death. But you're not responsible. I told a lot of people that and Roberta was in the hotel. Sandy Anderson might have been one of those persons. Listen to me, Janie. We know Sandy Anderson was in the hotel and on the second floor before the fire ever started. You see, you had nothing to do with Mr. Anderson's death. Thank you. It's been a long night. You two must be very tired. Yes, mm. everybody in town is tired, Mrs. Mott. You two are homeless, though. I think you'd better come out with us to the Pond. No, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Wade Tucker has been kind enough to lend me his home. Oh, well. Yeah. We lost our clothes, but we have a place to stay. Very nice place. Well, it's closer to the stores than the Ponderosa. Yeah. My uh, niece and your deputy make a handsome couple, Sheriff. I've noticed. She wasn't very happy about coming to Virginia City, but all that's changed now. Janie, we'd better be going now. We have to be up early. We have a lot of shopping to do. Mrs. Lund, was that why you went back into the hotel to try to save your clothes? No, it wasn't, Sheriff. It was to save my jewel box. It was in the bureau drawer. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, Mrs. Lund. Since you're carrying that, it might be wise if I walked you ladies home. It's a good idea. The ladies don't mind. We'd be delighted. Oh, Sheriff, Wade Tucker is very angry with you. He wants me fired. He has powerful friends. He's a stubborn man. But I'll do what I can to change his mind. I'll appreciate that. Night. Wade Tucker isn't wasting any time, is he? Oh, you got a lot of friends, Roy. Yeah, but right now they're mostly scared and afraid the houses are going to burn down. Well, Roberta's on your side. She's got a lot of powerful friends, too. Yeah? She's got more money she can count. How about a cup of coffee? Ah, yeah, that's going well, real good. Did you hear what she said about that jewel case? Yeah. Two, three hundred thousand dollars worth of jewels in a little bitty box. And she leaves it in the bureau drawer in the hotel. Here. She comes back from Europe, she's going to build a new house, spend a fortune on it. One more fire, and more than likely she'll change her mind. That'll make every merchant in town yell for my neck. You get a little spooked, Roy? You betcha I am. I've been wearing this badge for a lot of years now, and I can handle robberies and rustling and a lot of other things, but when it comes to a firebug, I'm, I'm just in trouble, Ben. I could use your help. You know you've got it, Roy. Thanks, man. I gotta investigate, and I have no idea where to start. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's kind of hard. The ashes from the hotel probably tell us something. We'd have to wait till daybreak. What about those two fires last month? Anything strange about them? Well, there was nothing that I noticed. One of them was a warehouse. Yeah, a Silver City warehouse. The building was locked. Cold ashes in the stove. The place just plain exploded. By the time the fire department got there, it was almost gone. Barn burner, it had to be. Yeah, and Sheriff Coffee did absolutely nothing. I'd look for a man with a grudge. That's what pushes burners, grudges and hate. And if you didn't find them, then what? Deputized citizens will patrol the town from dark until daylight. When a man turns burner, he doesn't quit until he's caught. Well, then he could be out there right now, getting ready to burn the rest of this town. Very easy. There's nobody there to stop him.
all about. You were too busy, so he did your work for you. He's the fire bug. Fire bug. All right, Ira, let's hear it. We found him in the alley by the burned-out hotel. There's no law about being there. So let's come in and he ran. That's proof right there. An honest man wouldn't have any reason to run. I see if you're charging at him, a man would be a fool not to. Now, what were you doing in the alley? Going home. He was going to start another fire. That's the way it is with burners. It's one fire after another. You know a lot about burners, don't you? I should. I've caught them. Roy, it took us a few questions, but we found out. He's the night cook at the Silver Dollar. The name's Smith. Whiskey Smith. The best cook in the valley. He went to work three hours before the hotel fire started. He worked straight through. Bartender, waitresses, the dishwasher, they'll all testify to that. Uh, Told you. You three gentlemen owe Mr. Smith an apology. And if it happens again, I'll sue the pants off you. And I'm still going home. And if it happens again, I'll jail all three of you. Oh, that goes over the beer. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just so anxious to find a buy a bug of All that talk of barn burner brought something to mind, man. We had a barn burner here about eight, nine years ago on the Rock Ridge Ranch. Yeah, I remember that. The house almost went up. George Benson fired a, a hand by the name of Tim Moss. A Moss was mad at a hatter, and he swore he'd get even. That same night, Benson's barn went up in flames. We never did find Moss, but I hear he's back now. Yeah, he's back. I saw him just a few days ago. Where? He was hunting up around Old Squaw Creek. Old Squaw Creek? Well, his folks had a homestead up there. Uh -huh. Joe, I'd like to talk to him if... You'd ride out and show Clem where the place is, I'd appreciate it. Do it first thing in the morning. Fire! Fire! Here we go again. difficult it is to make plans on a time like this. Most people in this town are afraid to go to bed for fear they'll be burned to death. May I see that? Yes? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a shame and a disgrace. And something has got to be done about it. There's a petition going around now to get rid of Sheriff Coffey and his deputy. Fire the deputy? Yes. Clem, you must have seen him on the street. Yes. We met in church. We both sing in the choir. He's the man I'm going to marry. Oh, I didn't mean anything against Clem. I was just telling you what I'd heard. How long does it take you to make a wedding dress like this? A week. I'll let you know. Thank you. Looks like somebody's working. Boss's cabin is right up ahead. All right. Let's leave the horses here. We'll walk in. <laughs> Howdy, 
Moss? Well, howdy. Heard the shopping. Want to see what's going on? You know Clem here, don't you? I've seen him around. When'd you get burned out? Oh, about five weeks ago. First night I got back. Bottom rusted out of my stove. Middle of the night, whole place went up. Yeah, it's a tough break. It can happen. Yeah, cabin stands empty, everything rusts. Well, the fire took just about everything I owned. I mean, a new axe, a couple of other things. <sighs> Prices they charge in Virginia City took just about every dime I had. Just as well, though, if I'd had the price of a room, I'd have been in that hotel. Oh, you saw the fire then, huh? Yeah, I was getting ready to leave when it broke out. Made the one I had look like nothing. I'm going to have to ask you to saddle your horse, Moss. Sheriff Coffey wants to talk to you. I knew this wasn't no friendly visit. Bringing the law here. I thought you were a friend of mine. I am, Moss. Just do what the man says, huh? Well, that's 32 names in a little less than an hour. First thing I'm gonna do is get rid of that deputy. Well, it won't be long till you can. Mr. Tucker's got this recall running like a Swiss watch. There's 16 of us out with these petitions. Then here's a file on all the fires we've had in the last 10 years. Here's one I remember. West livery stable. It was started by a drunk who was trying to light a lantern. He dropped a match into the straw. He was here when the hotel fire started. Joseph Ponderosa, Ben, he asked me to tell you. When'd you get back, Tim? Five weeks ago. That's what he told Joe and me. I was on my own place, minding my own business. When this deputy drags me in here. What for? Because we've been looking for you for a long time. I got a warrant for your arrest, signed by the district attorney. Arrest? Why? Well, suspicion of arson, a barn burn, and the rock arrest ranch. Barn burning? The day you left town. You were fired about noon. You swore you'd get even. The barn went up that night. Not me. I was past Carson then, heading south. Oh, I didn't even know about it till now. In any case, I've got to hold you. The warrant is still in force, so let me have your valuables. I'll keep them safe for you. Little Joe, where you been? How come you come back so late? Thanks for something to eat, I cooked dinner late for you. You think I cooked 24 hours a day just Look, for I said, you? Fix me something to eat. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Is that a long night? Just fix me a sandwich or something. came out to look at my ankle, he told me about the fire. I mean, make that plural. Fires at more than one. Is that a fact? You have any idea who's behind all this? Well, they got Tim Moss in jail. I don't think he had anything to do with it. Why'd Roy arrest him? Pressure. And to arrest somebody, the whole town's on his back. Moss was the most likely candidate because he was mixed up in that barn burning over at Benson's place a few years ago. But there was a reason for that. He and Benson had an argument. Benson fired him. No reason for him to burn the hotel in Virginia City or burn anything else. That makes sense. You know, arresting him and putting him in jail, that ain't the end of it. They still gotta let him stand trial. That's the part that worries me. I will say that Moss sure looked surprised. Yes, he did. And he admits that he was here for the warehouse fire as well as the hotel fire. He was near another fire too, Roy. Where was that? You know that cabin out at the Moss homestead? It burned after he got back. Certainly piles up, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. 
But I'm still not 100% sure. I've got some stuff to clean up out back. Okay, if I get it now? Go right ahead. Right. There's one fire on this list that we haven't talked about. The Ross Hardcastle House. <laughs> that was seven years ago. Oh, Ross lost his life in that one. He was half owner in the Lucky Lund mine. He and Lucky weren't getting along very well. In fact, they were yelling at each other when Lucky Lund killed over the heart attack. Next thing you know, Ross's house burned. Yeah, there were some ugly rumors at the time, I remember. Well, well, it's bound to be with this three, four million dollars involved. Which Roberta Lund inherited. Yeah. And then she went to Europe. And she came back and the fire started. Tell Mrs. Lund that the chef coffee and Ben Cartwright right here for syrup, please. What do you two want? We've got to talk to Mrs. Lund. She's here. And she will be until her house is built. I told you we'd have a new sheriff. And we will have. 1,200 signatures in one day. Your privilege. <laughs> oh, no. My pleasure. He's still angry. But I did tell you he was. How nice to see you. You're just the people I wanted to see today. Won't you sit down? I, uh... I've been thinking about the man who died in the fire. Mr. Anderson? He's a miner, I understand. Out of work quite a bit of the time. That's right, ma'am. He died a hero. His wife and children need help. That's what I wanted to see you about. What did you have in mind, Mrs. Lund? I'd like to give a big, big party to raise money. That way, everyone in Virginia City can contribute. And I'm sure they'll all want to. Oh, I'm sure they would. I'm just wondering if this would be the right time for it. Next week? Well, yeah, I think right now, uh, most everybody is pretty worried about their own homes going up in flames. And I don't think they'd want to go anywhere. I'm just wondering how many people would show up at that party. I hadn't thought of that. See, as soon as this whole thing is cleared up, my... I think everybody would be very happy to pitch in and help you make this the biggest party that ever was. How very nice of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Lund, I... Uh... Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I realize that I haven't asked you why you came to see me today. I think I can guess. I profited by a fire in Virginia City some years ago. I hear there are some people who think I set that fire. I imagine even my name is on your list of suspects. Well, there is just one routine question that I have to ask you. And it's, where were you on the night the hotel fire started? I was giving a dinner party at the Nevada Club. Now, you may be right, Andy, but I still think it was right falling. I'll be right with you, Jane. Come on up here. I hear you caught the fire bug. Well, I think so. Sheriff Coffey's not so sure. Is he mean looking? Oh, I guess you can say he's mean looking, yeah. What's going to happen to him? Prison for life. If he's found guilty, man died in fire. I feel sorry for him. You don't mind if I feel sorry for him, do you? No, I don't mind. Oh, you're a very pretty girl. I'm a very lucky guy. I hope you still think so after I tell you what I did. Oh? Aunt Roberta wants to have an engagement party for us. Oh. And I told her to go ahead. All that fuss, isn't there some way we can get out of it? Women like that kind of fuss, Clem. Besides, it's only a small party day after tomorrow. Women like it, do they? All right. I surrender. And I went shopping for a wedding dress. Oh, I don't mind you shopping, but we may have to wait. Because of the petitions? Why, sure. I may be out of a job. Clem, I've been thinking about that. Why wait? I mean, you can quit your job now, and we can get married right after the party and go away. We can go to California or someplace. I mean... You can find another job, and I'll find a job. Go away, I... 
I thought you liked it here in Virginia City. Not really. The only thing I've ever liked about Virginia City is you. Please, Clem. I want to get married as much as you do, Janie. Or more. But we can't. Not until this firebug thing is over. It's going to be all right. You just hang on. Wait right here for me. I've got to see the sheriff a minute. Ready to send you to the Iron Hotel. You wouldn't eat either. That's your choice. Sheriff, I didn't set any of them fires. Sheriff, that's the truth. I swear it. Sheriff, you gotta listen to me. You gotta listen, Sheriff. Somebody's gotta listen. Sheriff, you gotta listen to me. <laughs> Not been going on very long? He's been like that for three weeks now. He insists he's innocent. Well, most guilty men do. The point is that there's been no fire since Moss was locked up. Well, Roy, you feel a little more certain about him then? Then I wasn't until I heard that George Benson, that's the man who fired Moss, was at the hotel at the time the fire started. Motive, Moss still trying to get even. So that wrapped it up for me. Well, Roy, uh, I think there's something you want to hear. Dr. Quinn and I were talking in the Nevada Club, and he told me something to... Look, stop, sir. Well, now, some of this is supposition, but there is medical evidence to support a lot of it. There are people who are mentally ill who set fires without motive. They're not looking for money or revenge. They just like to see things burn. You're trying to say that Moss is not guilty? No, 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 no. I'm saying that... The mental illness does exist. And Moss may have it. Well, that's possible. Those who do are moody, depressed, withdrawn, just before they set a fire. Happy when they watch the fire and fulfilled afterward. I've seen a lot of these cases. I paid my way through medical school by working in an insane asylum. Well, then you've really seen these people. Oh, am I interrupting? No, 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 Clem. I, I said my piece. And I'm on my way. Well, thank you, Doctor. Well, I thought you should know. Well, Roy, I'd like to come back tonight and talk to Moss, if I may. That'll be fine, Doctor. Thanks for coming. Clem. Uh, Mrs. London's having a little party tonight, both Janie and me. We'd both like to have you, Cho, and Haas there. Well, a party? Well, I... Gee, I'm not going to have enough time to get to the ranch and get back and, you know... Well, she knew to... you were going to say that. She told me to accept no excuses. You can come on as you are. I'll, I'll pick you up at the hotel. We'll be there. Fine. All right. Roy? See you later. Bye, man. Is that stuff from Sacramento? Oh, good.
congratulations. To a long and happy life, and may all your children have wealthy parents. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Mm. Just in time, I'm going to make a little longer toast this time. Poor Dr. Dyvin. There hasn't been too much sunshine in Janie's life. Her mother died when she was born. Her father could never forgive Janie for her mother's death. Who's he now? He died tragically. After that, she was in boarding school for a while and passed back and forth from one relative to another. Then you came along. She should have been with me years ago. Well, look, Club, you've already got your girl. I think I better go find one for myself. I'll see you two later. <laughs> Do we really have to wait, Clem? Oh, Janie, I've got a job to do. If I'd pick up and quit and just walk away, I'd have a hard time finding work as a deputy anywhere else. A new place. I just think it'd be better for both of us. Clem, I'd like to drink to this very happy occasion and wish the both of you the best of luck. Uh, thank you, Roy. Mm -hmm. I swore a new deputy tonight, but just to keep his eye on the jail so that I could make this celebration. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Sure. Yes. Hey, that champagne makes a pretty good drink, don't it? Yes, thanks to you. Oh. Will you excuse me for a moment? Sure. What? Uh, excuse me, where's Janie? Oh, she was here. She excused herself. She must be in her room. And I understand the hardware store is going to change hands. Janie? Something was bothering her. I guess maybe she thought her nose was shining. You know what I think it is, Roy? I think she's a little nervous about getting married to Clem here. <laughs> <laughs>
Problem, there's nothing you can do. set up uh, just to the east grove there, just outside of town. Mm -hmm. And they're going to set up field kitchens and food and shelter for anybody who needs it. Good. With most of Virginia City burned down, just about everybody's going to need it. Yeah. Where's Clem? one spring that never went dry. We came to the right place. Nothing now. But the grass around here used to be knee-deep this time of the year. That's what I said, we came to the right place. Yeah, I know. But I wish I believed it the way you do. <laughs> it's all right, I know them. Whenever I'm in this part of the country, I work for them. Till I get the itch to move again. I'll be doggone if it isn't Dusty Rose. Joe Cartwright. Van, Hoss. How you Dusty, how are you? Fine and dandy. Jamie? This here's Jamie Hunter. We're traveling together now. Howdy. Good to see you, Jamie. Howdy. Jamie. I remembered this spring and figured it'd be a good place to fill up for barrel and water a horse, but nothing but dust. Yeah. Been like this for about four months. This is the worst drought we've had in years, Dusty. Well, you've still got the lake. Well, it doesn't help the grass in the hills much. People can make it rain. Well. I, I've heard that some people can make it rain, if they know how. Yeah, I've heard some people think they can, but I think it'll rain when it gets good and ready to rain. I hope it gets good and ready real soon. Boys, we better get along and find those strays. Esky, you and your young friend here, you come and have supper with us. Well, thank you. See you. Good to see you again. Look forward to it.
If the Cartwrights don't think you can make rain, nobody else is going to think so either. But this isn't the only place suffering drought. We'll go on to Carson City and try our luck there. No, we won't. They need rain here in Virginia City, and I'm going to make it. Last week he was charging two dollars a barrel, and that was steep. Well, Scott, since then we've had seven more days without rain, and there's always somebody trying to make money out of the misfortunes of others. It ain't right. No, but it's legal. Why don't you go up and buy a barrel before the price goes up again? I got 500 head of stock out there baking in the sun. A barrel wouldn't even get me started. Rainmaker. The vultures are beginning to circle. I don't know. I've heard some people make rain. I heard spunk water can remove warts. Did you ever try it? Never had warts. You've had a drought like this before. Come on, it won't cost us nothing to listen. Well, let's go find the mayor and strike a bargain. Strike a better bargain, let the mayor find you. What makes you think he's looking for us? You see the prices in the water wagon down the street? Yeah. He's looking. You know, Jamie, you put me in mind of a fellow I knew back in Big Springs. No education to speak of, but oh, my, he was smart. To hear him tell it, you'd think he knew more than any man living or dead. Yeah, what's he doing now? 20 years. Your name Garibaldi? That's what it says on the sign. But you can call me Doc. Well, uh, I'm Mayor Corey. What are you doing in Virginia City, Mr. Garibaldi? Well, we're just passing through. Stopped to water the horses. Is that a fact? Well, the troughs are all dry, and so most of the wells are out here. Oh, now, that's a shame. You think so? I said so, didn't I? I guess you've come to fill them up for us. Yeah, all it takes is a little rain. Which you can supply, I suppose. You said that, neighbor. I didn't. As a matter of fact, we're on our way to Colton, Arizona, where they haven't had a drop parade in three months. So we better be on our way. We promised them we'd be there by the end of the month. Just a minute, Doc. Well, minutes make hours, and hours make days, and waiting around here could make me late. Uh, well, we'll only take about 30 minutes of your time, and uh, we'll see that you get some water for your horses. We've been without water here for over four months. Maybe we ought to have a little talk, huh? Talk, talk, or business talk? Business. All right. You got 30 minutes. We can talk in my office. You'd like us to believe that you can uh, make it rain in Virginia City, huh? No, I'm only telling you I can. You can believe what you want. Can you absolutely guarantee you can make it rain? Absolutely. Well, suppose we did believe you. And suppose we was to hire you to perform these services. Just uh, what do you suppose it would cost? Well... Since we're only supposing, I suppose it costs you about $5,000. $5,000? You expect us to pay you $5,000? I don't expect you to pay me a red cent. Where we're going, Colton, Arizona, $5,000 does not bother many. They need rain, and they know I'll deliver, so they're waiting there with the money in their hands. Jamie? Uh, Mr. Garibaldi, uh, Doc, it's just possible that $5,000 does not scare us much either. But we would have to know more if we were going to close the deal. Oh? Mm -hmm. Like what? Why, well, you could camp on some side hill until we get a natural rain, then come running to collect. Well, you tell me, when do you need the rain? Yesterday. You're wasting my time. We haven't said no yet. You haven't said yes, either. Let's go on down the road. Look, Doc, we don't get rain within two weeks. There won't be anything here worth saving. Two weeks, huh? Oh, I can do that. The sprinkles don't count. It's got to be a real rain. It's got to cover this whole area. Oh, 20 miles in all directions. It's got to be. I wouldn't want the rain to miss Ben Cartwright's place. You uh, say that like you know. Oh, I do. And Hollis and Joe. You a friend of theirs? Well, we're in business together. Partners. Well, why didn't you say so? <sighs> Martin, you go talk to your neighbors south of town. Right. Garrison, you talk to your neighbors on the north and east. I'll line up the local folks. Well, Doc, that puts it square up to you. Well, we gotta have a contract first. Just have everybody sign right here at the bottom. Oh, well, we're all friends here. Well, a man can lose an awful lot of friends in a rainstorm. And then there's a little matter of the advance. What advance? 
$200 to buy the chemicals and explosives. Chemicals? Explosives? Certainly. We got to blow away the existing weather conditions. Frolicants the atmosphere and create a natural vacuum to be filled by the oncoming rain clouds. And that takes more than two sticks, a pinch of salt, and a loud sneeze. 200 out of city funds. It's mighty irregular. Here we stand, and down the road there's folks waiting with money in their hands. Oh, Doc, wait a minute. Here's your advance. Well, thank you, Mayor. I'll be back for that contract tomorrow. What's all this about $200? You told me all the chemicals we need wouldn't cost more than 50 I'm doing this for you. For me? Now, hold on, boy. You're going to buy the lumber to build the tower. $150 worth? Yeah. Just how much tower are you figuring on building? 18 feet and 2 inches high. And strong. Fine, strong, huh? Well, you've come to the right man for the job. Did I ever tell you about the bridge I built across No Bottom Canyon? Yeah, you told me. Now, this better work, or we're going to have an awful lot of sore citizens coming at us. Won't matter. They'll never see us. Why not? It'll be raining too hard. If you had one of these and fit me for one of these dress up vests, how much would you ask for? Well, this is $1.75, boss. $1.75? Dollar seventy-five. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Come on. Come on. This thing's going sky high. That's not bad. Yeah? Seems a little tight. Well, I have to let it out a little. Yeah. About a dollar seventy-five. That's what it is. Oh, hi. Hi, Jamie. Go ahead and wait on the other hand. Now, you look like a boy with a nickel to spend. I bet you want some jelly beans. Uh, no. Lakerish whips. Okay, I give up. What do you want? I need some buckets. Oh. Those are solid oak. They won't crack and split, leak. They'll last a lifetime. Good, I'll take ten of them. Ten? Mm -hmm. That's gonna cost you a lot of money. Oh, I've got a lot of money. And more coming. Forty-eight hundred dollars more. You wouldn't want to buy this whole store, would you? <laughs> no. That's what I should have said ten years ago. Oh, you want ten, uh, uh buckets? And, uh, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, a whole lot of things. Uh -huh. Um... 20 gallons of turpentine. 20 gallons turps. 15 pounds of sulfur. 15 pounds of sulfur. Um, 20 pounds of soda. 20 pounds of soda. Um, yeah, blasting powder. Oh, that comes in 10 pound cakes. Good, I'll take five. 50 pounds? Mm-hmm. Would you mind my asking, what do you want this stuff for? Atmospheric manipulation. Oh, I guess that explains this. Uh, what, was there anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. T uh, 20 pounds of salt. 20 pounds of salt. You have that? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, and a bottle of quicksilver. Quicksilver? Beans. Oh, no, no, we we'll need scoops. How many scoops? Three. Three, three. three scoops. Anything else? Um, let's see. Oh, I need something to stir with. Uh -huh. Something big, something big, like an oar. An oar. An oar. Yeah. Well, I've got an oar. Oh, okay, I'll take that. that. Uh, okay. Cups. Okay, four cups. Uh, four cups. You hired a what? A rainmaker, Ben. Said he was a friend of yours. Dr. B. Barnaby Garibaldi, rainmaker. Never heard of him. See? I told you he was a phony. You did not. Well, wait a minute, fellas. There's no harm done. Unless you've already paid him for the job. Not a chance. We were going to pay him when it rained. Except for the advance. The advance? How much? Uh, he said he needs some supplies. How much? Uh, chemicals, explosives, uh, $200. <laughs> All right, where is this miraculous rainmaker? Uh, last time I saw him, he was heading out of town. We're toward the Ponderosa. Howdy, Hoss. Oh, howdy, Dusty. Yeah, it looks uh, looks like you two are going to stay around for a while. Oh, a couple weeks, more or less. Did you get everything? Got everything. <laughs> Not everything. Where's the grub? That comes to $84.23. Now, are you sure there isn't anything else? Yes. Well, we'll need lumber for the tower. Oh, That's I've got right. that. I've got that out back. Well, let's have a look. I've got all kinds of it. Right through here. Hey, uh, Jamie, explain what... Tell me about the... That uh, 
manipulation. What is that in here? Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to make it rain. Oh, yeah. yeah I'll see you, Jamie. Okay, bye. Uh, something wrong? Oh, no, 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 they, they ain't nothing wrong. Best luck, Jamie. Thank you. Here she comes. On the ground, just touching. Just like I said, 18 feet, 2 inches exactly. All right. Well, come on down. We got a lot more to do. One quart of iodine. Fifteen pounds of sulfur. Blasting powder! <laughs> We're in business with a bang! That's the way it's supposed to be. Ten gallons of turpentine. Ten gallons of turpentine? Twenty pounds of soda. Right that could mean trouble. Well, if it is, it's been a mighty short two weeks. You, you wait right here. I'll go talk to him. Howdy, neighbors. Howdy. Something wrong? Sure, some piece of construction you got there. Yeah, and it had to be exactly the right size. Well, Ben, is he a friend of yours or ain't he? Oh, yes, yes, I know him. What about the advance? Well, anybody's going to build a tower like that sure isn't fixing to run off somewhere. Well, since they're on your land, you can keep an eye on them. I think I'll be getting back to town. It's a comfort to know he's a friend of yours, and you'll vouch for him. I'll, uh... I'll see you back in town. Now. Where'd you learn to build like this? Well, you know that trestle over Walnut Creek? Yeah. Well, I did six months carpentering on that trestle. Did you? Well, what's it for? And what about that? B. Barnaby Garibaldi, Doctor of Precipitative Practices. Now, would you mind explaining to me where you got that rig and that new name? Why, sure, man. Jamie? Is everything all right? Everything's fine. You can put the gun away now. Why don't you kick up the fire there and put the coffee pot back on? Holler when it's hot. Is he a relative of yours? No, he's a stray, like me. We kind of got together by accident. Huh? I was coming back from Montana, coming over a high pass, and I found this wagon in the ditch. Jamie was trying to get it out, and Tom Hunter, that's Jamie's daddy, was down sick in the back end of the wagon, and wrapped up in a blanket, freezing one minute and burning up the next. Yeah. Well, I didn't know Tom Hunter very long, but he was one of the best. And he knew he was dying, too, but not a whimper out of him. He just worried about the boy, and he asked me if I'd take care of him and kind of see that he got a fair share of education. <laughs> Told him I wasn't a man for that job, but he insisted. And you promised to do it? <laughs> yeah. But like I said, he was one of the best. Coffee's ready. Be right there. Got a responsibility to take out. Oh, it ain't been too bad so far. It's probably strong enough to float a bullet, but that's the way my pa liked it. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, it's strong, all right. You old enough to drink coffee? I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'm old enough to drink coffee. Old enough to take care of him, too. Now, just a minute. You're might confused, aren't you? I'm taking care of you, remember? Well, I might have might confused. Now, 
you Dusty Rhodes, and you Jamie Hunter. Who's this Dr. Garibaldi? Nobody really. The name just kind of goes along with the wagon and the boat. Then Dusty's a bad name for a rain maker. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Now, what makes you so all fire certain that you can make rain? <laughs> I'm not sure, but he is. It's on the book, Mr. Cartwright. My pa wrote it all down, step by step. Well, son, I, I sure don't mean to be disrespectful to your father. I just don't believe that it's possible to shape or twist nature to make it do whatever you want it to. I'm sure you can. You can dam up a stream and water a field. You can plow up the ground and spread fertilizer around and plant corn where nature's growing nothing but weeds and wildflowers. Well, of course, you can do that in the ground, but you can't make rain out of the sky. No, no more than you can make corn out of the ground. But you can plow the ground and plant the seed. Jimmy, this is not a game. This is serious, dangerous business. Look around you. It's tinted dry as far as the eye can see. We haven't had rain here in four months. And people are upset. Now, they can't take their frustrations out against nature. But if someone like you comes along, you say you're going to make rain, they believe you. And then you cannot make rain. They can sure take it out on you. We get hired, Mr. Cartwright. We're gonna make rain. Thanks for the coffee. You shouldn't have talked to him like that. He's much as said my pa was a liar. Now, hold off, boy. He said there are some things a man can't change, and the weather might just possibly be one of them. My pa was right, and I'm going to prove it. Oh, well, now, listen, Jamie. You going to try to talk me out of it, too? It'd be a waste of my breath. That's right. But I'll tell you something. If you don't start being a little nicer to people, I'm going to turn you over my knee. And another thing, it's about time you start to learn a little yes, sir, and no, sir, and thank you very much, sir. You think so? I know so. All right. What? I said all right. All right what? All right, sir. That's better. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you very much. What'd you say? Nothing. I'll be very honest, Corey. I don't think there's a man alive who can make rain. It's not a happy thought, Ben. No, it sure isn't. We got to let him try, Ben. Things are desperate now. Getting worse by the minute. Not so bad for you, Ben. You got a whole lake full of water. Yes, and no grass. Well, I've got a little of either, and I'm willing to try anything. All right, but don't get your hopes up too high. Well, you're the one who vouched for them. I didn't vouch for their ability to make rain. Well, if it don't rain, you were right. If it does, you get the benefit without paying. Gentlemen, if it rains within the next two weeks, I'll be more than happy to pay my share.
Nasty, start mixing those chemicals. What's going on here? We're preparing to sow the seeds, man. For one minute. Well, what are you doing all this? Why don't you just stop it before it goes any further? Well, I don't know how we can do that, short of tying him in the back of the wagon and riding him out of the country. Look, I got a book here that a friend of mine gave me in town. It's all about frauds and confidence games. And there's a whole chapter here about rainmakers. Now, we can prove to him that he cannot make rain. It won't make a bit of difference. Well, we can prove it. Ben, all you've got is a book that says he can't. He's got a book that says he can. Now, just what have we proved? Dusty, this book was written by an authority. And his book's written by his Paul. Well, his Paul was wrong. But Ben, he's heard all that. He's heard his dad called a charlatan, a fraud, a scoundrel. He's seen him run off and chased away. Why, he's even seen him tarred and feathered and ridden out of town on a rail. Well, then he knows that it's dangerous. <sighs> Better than either one of us. That's what killed his daddy. You saw all this? Yeah. They worked Jamie over with the Willis switch while they were at it. When his paw died, Jamie latched onto that book and set out to make it rain with a vengeance. I guess he's trying to prove to the whole world that those people were wrong and his daddy was right. Hi, Jimmy. What are you doing here? Well, I, uh... I just, uh, came out of there. Why? You don't believe in anything I'm doing. It's just that we have different opinions, Jamie. I know we do. Why do you want to help? Well, they asked me in town to come out of here and keep an eye on you. Well, as long as I'm out here, I might as well help. Well, as long as you're here. Come on, Dusty. We got lots of work to do. We're wasting time. Remind me to teach him how to say please. With a rain cloud, I wouldn't come anywhere near that noise. I said I'd pay my share, but I'm beginning to wonder. You know, I've seen that Doc Garibaldi someplace before, but I don't remember him being partners with the car, right? He said he was. What do you figure he's doing up there anyway? Wasting our time and our money. You finished eating? Yeah. You never even touched it. I wasn't very hungry. Jamie, the ink on that page isn't going to fade. It's still going to be there in 20 minutes. Now you eat. Howdy, Jamie, Dusty. Howdy, Oz. What brings you way out here? Oh, I thought I'd just sort of come out and show with you fellas. How well, about a cup of coffee? Hey, that sounds good. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you'd invite. Hey, uh, Jamie. Do you sure enough believe for real that you'd make it rain? Darn right I can't. I mean, it's all right here in the book. Yeah? Hey, uh, read me some of that, huh? Here you go. What you got there, Hoss? Huh? Oh, this? It's, uh, what is it? It's an umbrella. I, I, uh, I bring it out to Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Read me, boy. Read me. <laughs> all right. Clouds must be the rainmaker. Playing with gunpowder and cooking up stinks that would shame a skunk. He said two weeks and it ain't been but 13 days. And I got water holes full of dust and cattle dying. It ain't real for Rain's what he promised. We better get it by tomorrow. Or that Garibaldi's gonna phase with it by lightning. Nine. Here's the soda. That's ordinary soda. You use that in a rainmaking mixture? Mm-hmm. Use salt too. And sulfur and turpentine and 
things people keep in their pantry shelf. If it ain't what's in it, it's known how to use it. We'll take it up to the tower, Dusty. There's a lot of stars up there. The clouds will come. You'd be surprised how fast they pile up once they start. Well, uh, I'll tell you, if the rain doesn't come. I still got the rest of the night and all day tomorrow. It's gonna rain, Mr. Cartwright. If it ain't cloud up come morning, I still have pause emergency page. Is what? His emergency page. Getting the air ready takes two weeks sometimes. If it ain't reading by then, you just double the batches. Or if every time Pa uses it. Well, I better get to the tower. And work. Sometimes I'd go to sleep. The next morning, I'd wake up in the back of the wagon. Didn't even remember him picking me up and moving me. He was a genius, you know. He really could make it rain. People just didn't understand. They thought he was trying to cheat him or something. what you think, isn't it? Uh, I'm willing to be shown. Well, I'm going to show you. My pa was a genius, and I'm going to prove it. You getting a little tired? No need for both of us to be up here. That's right. One of us could be getting some sleep. Right. You call me as soon as it gets light. Crack a door. Huh? Yeah. Here we are. I've done it before. 
Pa used to wake me up. For a minute, I thought you were Pa. I, I was dreaming about Grass Flat. I, I, could, I could smell the tar boiling. And they were coming at us from every place. And tar and feathers. That's what they did to my Pa. You better get some rest now. Tomorrow's a big day, Jamie. I'll go tend to things. You try to get some rest, Jamie. There were, there were rain making jobs after Grass Flat. We'd just get started. The drunks would come and call my pa a fool and a cheat. And, and lots worse. We'd run. My pa was sick and shaking. And, and we just couldn't wait for the air was ready. I ain't running. Of course you're not. Now, come on, lie down. I ain't running. Come morning, I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to double the badges, and I'm going to show everybody that my pa knew how to make it rain. Of course you will. Come on, I'll lie down. Come morning. You'll see. Come morning. Breakfast, two bites for dinner. That boy makes a sparrow look like a hearty eater. He's worried. He's not alone. I never was a believer, but I admit I did a lot of hoping. you're thinking. What if you do? You know, I wish it was raining. Thanks. It's only four o'clock. I, I got till midnight. You got eight hours. enough time for three batches, but I ain't got enough stuff to make even one. What do you need? Soda, turpentine. We've got some of the Ponderosa. I'll get some for you. Why? You, you don't believe I can make it rain? I'll try to be back by dark, maybe a little after. Where's the rain? We've been trying, day and night. It ain't midnight yet, I have. You shut your mouth, boy. Dr. Garibaldi, huh? I finally remember where I seen you before. You was partners with Hoss and Joe in that livery stable deal. Yeah, we was learning the business from the ground up. Got a wise mouth. But he ain't no doctor, and his name ain't Garibaldi. 
I never said it was. That's what you led us to believe. The same thing. He already stole 200. You was hoping to steal a lot more. Yeah. Now we're going to fix it so you don't do that to nobody again. Start wrecking it, boys. Now, hold on here. You got no right to... What's that, Doc? You let him alone. I'm the Rainmaker. Look who's talking. Is your name Garibaldi? No, but I'm the Rainmaker. You're a half pint of nothing, boy. You better find yourself a hole and hide. You want to get walked on. Stay out of this, Jamie. Get moving, boys. Wait! It's all in here. My pa wrote it all down. He was a Rainmaker. He taught me. What are you talking about, boy? It, it, my pa knew what he was talking about. He wrote it all down in the book. Let me see that. Give me my book! Hey, you! Give me my... Hold it. Now, give that boy his book. And then clear out of here, all of you. You heard me. Now, give that boy his book. And then clear out. Give me my book. Give me my book. Give me... folks that hired us to make rain. Scott was one, and Garrison. I'm sorry, Jamie. Just a bunch of burnt pages. What's to be sorry about? Jimmy, I'm going to take you home. My home's in that wagon, Mr. Cartwright. Besides, I can't leave Dusty. And Dusty will come along with us. I didn't run. I said I wouldn't run, and I didn't. No, you didn't run. I didn't cry. I'm too big to cry. That's right. You're too big to cry. Two minutes to ten. You're two hours ahead of when we promised. Destruction of property. There's enough here to keep a court busy for a solid month. Jamie, I guess you're not going to be able to leave as soon as you thought. Anyway, there's not too much work for a rainmaker these days. And with a muddy road, it's not going to be easy to travel. 
I'm used to bad roads. Well, you gotta stick around till the uh, wagon is fixed. We're gonna take care of your wagon for you. Wheels, axle paint, be as good as new. Or better. New sign, too. What about my pa's book? I guess you can't put that back together again, can you? No way we can. But we're mighty sorry about it. Save you the trouble of having to tell us what happened. Might as well get on with it. We hired ourselves a rainmaker. Rain in two weeks, so we don't have to pay for it. Night before last, rain started at 10 o'clock, two hours before the time ran out. We ain't denying the rain, but we sure didn't hire a boy to make it. You hired Dusty and me and my pa's book. We did get rain, and it did come just before the contract time ran out. For them is one to argue. I got documents here charging trespass, assault and battery, destruction of property, and sundry other crimes. Seven pages of it. Well, we did make a mistake. We're willing to set it straight. Pay for the rain, too, just like we agreed. And Jenny, it's up to you. They gotta say my pa made it rain. I just did what he put in the book. Pa made it rain. Your pa made it rain, son. And we're willing to put it in right. <sighs> Mr. Cartwright's already paid for his share of the rain. And as soon as the rest of us do likewise, we can forget about the warrants and charges. <laughs> It'll be a while before you can leave. Gotta get that wagon fixed up and get all the money collected. Uh, Dusty's gonna work with us in Ponderosa. You're uh, welcome to stay just as long as you'd like. Well, not much on taking favors, but... Well, I could stay for a while, if I could pay for board. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll find you a bunch of chores to make it come out even, huh? All right. Hey, let's just be able to clear up. <laughs> 